Hey Savvy People, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be going through and reviewing OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. We'll first explore its contents and everything that it has to offer with its default desktop environment, and then I'll go ahead and give it some ratings. My first impressions are that it has a very nice layout here with the KDE Plasma desktop environment that I've installed. The desktop is fairly uncluttered, and there's just a couple things here in the background as you see. The environment kind of resembles Windows, but has its own features located in various parts of the screen. The colors here are fairly dark with the default wallpaper, but some of the other items like the taskbar pop out at you because of this. I like the fact that you can put some items on the desktop screen, such as files, because some distributions don't allow you to do this. And I do like organizing my files on the desktop background, so that's important to me. Let's take a look at some of the OpenSUSE Tumbleweed components here and get a feel for what's included in the operating system. Also, if you're new and stopping by to watch a review today, please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more reviews. So you can seem to highlight in the background, which I would expect since you could have icons. So if we highlight a couple icons, we can also move them around the screen. As you can tell here, we'll move them back up to the top. And then in the far right corner, you see a little tiny icon here, which you can click and you get a couple options here, such as refreshing the desktop, customizing the layout, just showing the desktop again, and adding widgets as well as different options here. You can also reach some of these from other parts of the screen, but it's a nice little shortcut here up at the top. If we click it again, we'll move it out of the way. I'm going to check out what different types of backgrounds they have here. So we can do that by right clicking and just hitting configure desktop. So as you can tell here, there's not much to choose from in the wallpaper. So let's get some new wallpapers here and just download them from online. There's a few options here with some ratings. This one seems to have fairly good ratings. So let's go ahead and install that right away. So let it install this nebula. And it looks like we have it now since it's saying uninstall. Go ahead, close out, and as you can tell, it's here. Let's change that background, see what we get. So you can click it to highlight it, and then hit apply. And as you can see, we've changed the background. I think that looks a little better. It's still pretty dark, but uh, it's kind of cool. So let's go ahead and use that for now. And down in the far right corner, we have a few more options. You have the configuring of the panel, if you'd like to do that. You can do such things as add, adding widgets, spacers, and more settings here. You can also exit out of here if you're done editing stuff. And then if you click here, you can show the desktop screen. So if you have a bunch of files opened up and you want to get to the desktop quick, this is always an option to get to the desktop screen. We also have the time and date here, as well as hidden icons if there are any. The volume control, the battery, power, the network that's currently connected, as well as the device that was last used. So I'm not really feeling this background. I'm going to change it real quick. So I'm going to go back into Configure Desktop here. And let's see if I can apply this one here. I like this one better, a little brighter for me. I like the light here, so I'm going to keep this. So if you right click anywhere on the background, you can go ahead and get a few more options and create new folders, HTML, files, text files, refresh the desktop, add widgets and panels, as well as lock the screen. So you have different uh, options here, really quick to get to. If you just right click, you can always use this. And down on the far left hand of the screen, you have different workspaces. So you can tell here that you have desktop one versus desktop two that you can select from. As well as on the far left hand side, you have their start menu or what they call an application launcher. You have who's currently logged in and a search bar available to you if you want to just search for items quickly. And then here you have the access to just a few favorites such as the file manager, a word processor, which is the LibreOffice writer because this comes standard with the LibreOffice suite, as well as a help center and the terminal as a favorite. If you want more applications, you can go ahead and scroll over and as soon as you hover over, you get the more applications, which gives you subcategories of more applications, such as settings, tuning the system, the office that I was talking about a moment ago, 
and games. If you scroll over to computer, you have information and shortcuts pertaining to the computer itself, such as the system settings, a software center called Discover, and network setup. So if you need to do some remote networking to other computers, you can do it here, as well as some shortcut to places here, such as the trash bin, uh, documents, and your home folder. Since Savvy Nick is logged in, it's going to default to the home Savvy Nick folder. History allows you to go through and look at uh, what you've used in the past. As you can see, I mess with the display configuration as well as use terminal in the super user mode. And if you go to leave, you have options such as logging out of your computer, switching a user, hibernating the computer, restarting it, and shutting it down. So let's go ahead and search for their file manager. So if we do that, we see that we have the option of running the file manager in super user mode. I don't necessarily suggest that, but uh, Dolphin, their file manager here is fine, so I'll click on that. And let's review their file manager a little bit. If you've made it this far, go ahead and take a moment to like the video. It really does help me out. So we can open up the file manager here and take a look at what kind of options we have. On the far left-hand side, they kind of have your favorites here that they call places. So you have such things as the networking, so you can network various devices from your LAN with this particular computer. Then you have shortcuts to your home, desktop, documents, downloads, and trash, as well as things that you've done recently and other things that you want to search for. It shows your current device, which is your storage space. I have 33 gigs available on this hard drive as well as different removable devices that you have, such as CDs, DVDs, USBs, and everything else that you can think of. Here in the middle, we have available files and folders that we can look at. You can actually increase the size of them by using this little slider at the bottom here. As you can see, it can get fairly big, so this is really nice to be able to see your icons very easily. And as you can tell here, they're quite blown up. In the far right here, it tells you how much free space you have left. This is really nice to know. So I have about 27 gigs here available to me. There's also different types of layouts here in the top. You can look at it in a list view as well as in a tree grid view. So you can see here, if I expand desktop because it has other items underneath it, it has the home folder as well as the trash bin available there. You can do searches for various files on your computer and also use filtering for these files as well. And then you have preview, which just changes the view here, as well as split, which splits the screen into two here. I don't like using this, so I'm gonna close that out. And then control for a whole slew of other things that you can control in the file manager. So different things like sorting, showing hidden files or not, reloading the file manager, as well as some configure options here. So if you want to configure the file manager, you can go to configure Dolphin and change up the viewing modes as well as just general things such as the default modes that come with it. So you can see here, you can change the sorting mode, previews, confirmations, status bars, etc. I'm going to cancel out of here since I don't want to change anything. Well, that's a pretty good overview of their default Dolphin file manager here. Let's go ahead and exit out. And another thing that I use a lot that I want to check out is that is their terminal, which I'll go ahead and search for. If I type in terminal, what we come up with is two different options here, as well as a third, which is the X term. I'm not really going to talk about that, but we have terminal in the super user mode and console, which is their terminal here. That's what they call their terminal anyway, console. So I don't normally suggest to use terminal in the super user mode. We're just going to ignore that because you can always log in as a super user. So I'll use console kind of to view things here and see what their default console looks like, or I should say their default terminal. And in console here, you can see that the username and the host name are all in white. It's got a very dark background here, very dark gray. I like that because you can't see through it either, and it's not transparent, which some distributions have transparent backgrounds on their terminals. This does bother me because it sometimes gets in the way with meshing 
on things in the background. So I do like the fact that they have that. White shows up very well on a dark gray background, so I really like that as well. And as you're typing in commands, so LSAL here, you can see that there is a variety of colors. What I'm going to do is make this a little bigger here so we can see it all this text. So I'm just going to enlarge the font. Give me a moment here. All right, I think that's much better. So if we type in LSAL again, you can see all these items here. So executable items will show up in green in this distribution as well as white for just basic file names and folders seem to be showing up in a light blue color. Everything looks very distinguished so I really do enjoy this terminal that they have set up here. If you hit the file option you can create multiple tabs as well as clone tabs but it doesn't seem like your settings saved from the previous tab which is not a big deal but it would be nice so I don't have to do that every single time. I'm sure that there's also an option to go ahead and change what the default terminal looks like so you always do have that. You can also, like I said, clone a tab so if you like something that you already have you can hit the clone tab and it will take you to the same place that you're currently located so home savvy Nick here. You can do other things such as editing to find very various things as well as pasting. Here in the view I showed you already you can enlarge font, shrink the font, set different types of encoding, clear the screen and other things here. You can also split the view. Bookmarks, you can make bookmarks on things that you tend to visit a lot. Very nice to have as well as settings so you can configure that console like we were talking about before in order to make it look more like you want it to. I'm going to cancel out of here since I'm not going to switch it up right now. And you do have help options if you need them. I just suggest Googling for anything like that. But that gives us a general overview of the console which is their default terminal here in OpenSUSE. Let's go ahead and exit out. Hit the close window. You can also select the do not ask again. Hit close window. So OpenSUSE is an independent distribution whose main focus is to make Linux easy for everyone to use. The goal here is to be accepted by everyone, including admins, developers, everyday users, and beginners. They have a few different offerings, including a desktop version, server version, and even a Raspberry Pi version with multiple different architectures of support. OpenSUSE has been around since the 90s and is one of the top Linux distributions out there. They have support from the SUSE community who has developed and maintained OpenSUSE from their E. They have support from the SUSE community who has developed and maintained OpenSUSE from their enterprise version called SUSE. It's a very popular distribution and they stay true to their ideology to create an all-encompassing distribution. There's one more thing I wanted to check out with terminal here. Let's go back in there. So we'll use console again. I just wanted to log in as a super user kind of to see if anything changes in there. And there we go. So now that you're logged in as a super user, you actually don't have the root name. You just have the current host name as well as the location that you're in and everything is highlighted in red, kind of just giving you an indication that you are a super user now. So I'm going to exit out of here and then just check out settings here. So let's see, if we type in settings, what do we get? System settings is what I want. So going into system settings, let's review some of these settings here. As you can tell, they are grouped in different places here. So you have appearance, workspace, personalization, network, hardware, and system administration. I do like these groupings here. It seems like you can configure some things up at the top. But uh, let's say you want to change your display settings, you can go to the hardware section and hit the display and monitor, which allows you to change things such as the display configuration, as it says, the, the compositor, gamma, and night color. And if you just highlight any of these, it does tell you a brief description of what each subsection actually has in it. So as you can tell in the power management, we have energy savings, activity settings, advanced settings. So that's kind of neat to know because you don't have to necessarily select something without knowing what's inside of it. Uh, you have things such as the window management, 
workspace behavior, how you want to start up and shut down, audio settings, system administration and information at the bottom, and various cursors that you can select from, fonts, colors, and a slew of other things. The one thing I'll just go into display and monitor so you can actually change the resolution in here and change the global scale of the screen to make it bigger if you so choose to do so. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and give OpenSUSE some ratings here. So OpenSUSE is a very popular Linux distribution and has been in the game since the 90s. I'll give it a popularity rating of 9 out of 10 because a lot of people use it. It's simple to use and gives user friendliness for admins, devs, everyday users, and even beginners. They keep this in mind during their development and releases, and they also offer a few different types of desktop environments, including GNOME, KDE Plasma, Cinnamon, Enlightenment, LXDE, Mate, XFCE, and even more. Therefore, a user can really customize their desktop experience if they choose to do so, giving it a user friendliness rating of 9 out of 10. Since there's a rolling release model, Tumbleweed, and a stable release model called Leap, it has the best of both worlds and covers all its bases so you can get the latest and greatest instability as well as allow you to really tune your system however you want. And I can give it a performance rating of 8 out of 10. This distribution is an independent distribution which is developed by the SUSE community and has been in the game for quite a while. As said before, there's plenty of resources available as well as many different types of additions for the distribution, giving it a features rating of 9 out of 10. And finally, it has a nice size community supporting it who's been around for quite a while and has definitely made a name for itself over the years. It gets a sustainability rating of 9 out of 10. That gives it an overall score of 44 out of 50. I hope you enjoyed this review and walkthrough of OpenSUSE. Let me know if you think the rating system is fair. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.